Double A and triple A batteries, we all use them, some a lot more than others. In today's video, you're going to find out if these double A and triple A EBL lithium ion batteries are any good. These type of batteries are fairly new, have a higher cost than rechargeable nickel metal hydride or alkaline batteries. But if they perform as the manufacturer states, then these double A and triple A batteries may be for you. Let's get started. Now the first thing people are going to say is how is it even possible that a lithium ion battery is going to have an output of 1.5 volts when the chemistry has a nominal voltage of around 3.7 volts. The way these are made are very simple. Inside this tube you're going to find either a rolled up lithium ion cell just like you saw inside the 18650 in another video that I showed you or you may have a small lithium polymer cell. So you have that 3.7 volt cell and connected to that cell is a very small circuit that takes the 3.7 volts and steps it down using a voltage converter to a 1.5 volt regulated output. This particular brand charges the battery through the positive tip over here as well as the negative and some brands you have a negative at the bottom you have the positive tip but some of them are going to have a ring on the inside that's isolated from the tip. So if you were to measure between the inner ring and here, you would see 3.7 volts. And if you were to measure between here and the tip, you would see 1.5 volts. The chargers must match the batteries. So this is an EBL battery. You have to use an EBL charger. If you try a different cell in here, you can have a pretty big problem. I follow the manufacturer's instructions and it says to cycle the batteries three to five times to get the full capacity out of the batteries. So by doing that, we should have reliable testing for these AA and AAA EBLs. The charger that's included uses USB. It's eight bay. It charges the AA or AAA batteries. You can charge one battery or eight. When the battery is depleted and you place it inside this USB charger, you're going to see red LEDs illuminate across the top. In order to use this, you must use a 5 volt USB type A port that's capable of supplying up to two full amps. And I made sure of that in this video by verifying the output of mine using this USB load tester. Now the one thing I noticed is that if you're using a USB type A port and the voltage drops below 5 volts under load, it can take six to nine hours to charge these batteries. And I'm not too thrilled about that because most people's ports are going to drop below 5 volts. But if you have a USB port that stays above 5 volts, it only takes 2.5 to 3 hours. Now let's take a closer look at each one of the batteries. You can see right over here it says 3000 milliwatt hour. And this one over here, the AAA, is a 1200 milliwatt hour. When a load is connected to these batteries, the voltage stays well regulated. It stays between 1.55 and 1.6 volts for 95% of the discharge cycle. And at the very end, in the last few minutes, what happens, it'll drop from 1.55 down to 1.15 to 1.25 for a few minutes. And then the internal circuitry of the battery disconnects the power output, ensuring that the battery cannot be fully drained to damage the internal lithium ion battery. So if you take the 3000 milliwatt hour and you divide that by the voltage output, which is roughly 1.55, you're going to end up with a milliamp hour capacity, which is right around 1,925. The AAA, if you take that 1200 and you divide that by 1.55, you're going to end up with around 775 milliamp hours. So we're going to see if the manufacturer has these marked with a rating that's very close to the actual rating. A typical AA energizer or Duracell battery has a weight of between 23 and 24 grams. And for a triple A for energizer or Duracell, it's going to have a weight between 11 and 11 and a half grams. So let's weigh these to see how it compares. Take a look at the weight of the AA first. Just under 19.5 grams. So four or five grams lighter than an Energizer or Duracell Alkaline. And for the triple A, about eight and three quarter grams. 
So that's about two or three grams less than the Energizer and Dorcel AAA. Now right here, just to show you the difference between the discharge curve for an alkaline AA at a 200 milliamp discharge current and a AA nickel metal hydride battery, you can see right here the voltage starts up around 1.6 or a little bit higher and with that load applied the voltage quickly begins to drop so after one hour which is about one third of the way right here you're going to be probably just under 1.4 for the alkaline so 138 and over here you're going to be around 1.23 and as time goes by the alkaline continues that steady decline until it reaches a point where it drops off much quicker. So the alkaline is continuously dropping, but the nickel metal hydride battery reaches a point just above 1.2, and it stays pretty stable at that 1.2 level, and then it drops a little below to maybe 1.15, and then it just drops off very quickly. So that's the difference between these two right here. Now what I don't like about nickel metal hydride batteries, and the reason why I do not use them, is the lower voltage. So when they're fully charged, the voltage is going to be around 1.38 when you take them off the charger. And after a few minutes, it's going to settle down, maybe to 1.3 or a little bit lower. And then once you place the load on it, it's going to drop. And it's going to reach that point where it levels off around 1.2. A lot of electronic devices will not operate properly at a lower voltage. So if you have two of these batteries connected together, you're going to be powering a device maybe 2.4 volts or a little bit less 2.35 the circuitry in some devices may not perform properly if you have a flashlight it's not going to be as bright as using an alkaline battery because you're going to be operating the LED in it at a much lower voltage I also do not like the fact that if you place this inside of an electronic device and you decide you don't want to use it for two three months you go back to use it a lot of the charge has been lost and sometimes as these age you can find the device completely dead. So not a big fan of nickel metal hydride batteries. And the discharge curves that you see here for the alkaline battery and the nickel metal hydride is going to be basically the same for a triple A, just the duration is going to be lower due to the lower capacity. After I'm done testing the double A's, I'm going to draw on this graph the discharge curve for those lithium ions. For capacity comparison, an Energizer AA or Dorcel that's discharged at a 200 milliamp rate is going to have a capacity of around 2100 milliamp hours. As for the AAA, it's going to have a value right around 800. Now the important thing that you need to know is that both of those values are overstated. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the testing or the maximum discharge voltage when the test is performed is all the way down to a voltage of around 0.8 volts. 0.8 volts is worthless when it comes to a double A or triple A battery. Anything below 1.1 or 1 volt, you're going to have your electronic devices not working properly, your flashlights may not work properly, so they're really, really pushing it. So the 2100 is more than likely around 1900 in usable power, and for the AAA, probably end up with a capacity of around 700 or slightly less. For the first test, I'm going to take the fully charged AA batteries, and I'm going to apply a 400 milliamp constant current drain using this Opus battery analyzer, and that's a very high level. The typical current drain for a AA battery is between 50 and 75, but it's still good to test it to see how well it handles. During the 400 milliamp drain test, I'm going to be checking the temperature of the batteries using my thermal camera. Right here with the AA batteries in the analyzer, you can see the voltage of each one of the batteries. The current level is set to 400, and here you can see the milliamp hour capacity accumulating. And here you can see when the batteries are almost depleted, the voltage drops well below the 1.55, to that 1.15 to 1.25 range. The test is now completed using the 400 milliamp drain and you can see the values are at or above what the rating should be. Okay, now let's try the 200 milliamp drain. Battery's fully charged, you can see the voltage, and we're going to let this sit for a while. 
And right here you can see the capacity is very similar to the 400 milliamp test. Now we're going to test the triple A's at 200 milliamps. You can see the starting voltage for each one of the batteries as well as the level of discharge set at 200. You can see the AAA batteries are not exactly close to each other on their values, but if you average them all out, you're getting a capacity just under 600, and it should be around 775. So the AAAs are coming in lower so far, and the AA's came in in line or higher. So we're going to repeat the test now. Again, I'm going to fully charge the AAA's, and we're going to retest using 100 milliamps. Once again, you can see the batteries were all different levels, but the milliamp hour rating is about the same as it was for the 200 milliamp test. Here's the graph modified with the double A discharge curve using the lithium ions, perfectly straight at the 1.55 volt range, then it drops down to 1.2, and then it stays steady for a little bit at 1.2, and it just drops off. So if you're looking for a 1.5 volt output that's going to stay there for the majority of the discharge, then these batteries are definitely the way to go compared to the alkalines and nickel metal hydride. And that is it. You just saw all four tests for these batteries, so you should know exactly how these batteries are going to perform if you decide to buy them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.